Failure to follow these instructions or to properly install and maintain this equipment could result in an explosion and or fire causing property damage and personal injury or death. Call a gas service person to service the unit. Only a qualified person must install or service the regulator. To avoid personal injury or property damage from sudden release of pressure, isolate the regulator from the pressure system and release all pressure from the pilot and main valve before performing maintenance operations. Use proper lifting techniques when lifting the upper and lower actuator casings off the EZH or EZHSO series body. The actuator assembly can weigh more than 100 pounds. Please consult the EZH instruction manual for references to specific drawings, key numbers, and part numbers. Depressurize the regulator from the outlet side before loosening any fittings. Remove the pilot control lines attached to the regulator. Follow best practices maintenance procedures. Make sure all surfaces are clean, free from dirt and debris before reinstalling any O-rings and split rings or reassembling any other parts or components. Please note, the spring is under high compression tension. Caution should be used when unbolting the actuator. Remove the longer stud bolts last. Before beginning the maintenance process, note the original position of the actuator casings. Make a mark on the upper actuator casing, the lower actuator casing, the intermediate flange, and body to indicate proper alignment. To perform maintenance on the actuator assembly, please use the following procedure. Make a mark on the upper actuator casing, lower actuator casing, intermediate flange, and body to indicate proper alignment. Remove the travel indicator assembly. Loosen the hex nuts and remove the washers and the cap screws. Remove all of the short bolts first. Then evenly remove the two long bolts. Make sure to balance the upper actuator casing while removing the spring tension. Carefully lift the upper actuator casing off the lower actuator casing. Remove the spring. Remove the travel indicator stem. Remove the socket head cap screws. Lift off the inlet plate and the diaphragm. Remove the outside O-ring. Inspect the O-ring for damage or wear. Replace the O-ring. Remove the O-ring from the inlet plate and inspect it for damage or wear. Then replace. Move to upper actuator casing. Inspect the upper actuator casing and remove the O-ring. Inspect for damage or wear. If damaged, remove the O-ring. Remove the split rings and examine for wear. Lightly lubricate the split rings. Place the split rings in the body first with the split sections being 180 degrees across from each other.
lubricate the O-ring. Then slide the O-ring between the two split rings. Move back to the body. Remove hex nuts from the stud bolts. Lift off the lower actuator casing. Remove the hex socket cap screws and the spring lock washers. Lift off the disc holder assembly and disc retainer. Slide the sleeve out of the lower actuator casing. Then slide the outlet plate off the sleeve. Check the sleeve for scratches, burrs, or other damage, and replace if necessary. Remove the O-ring from inside the lower actuator casing. Inspect for damage or wear. Remove the first split ring and inspect for damage or wear. Replace if necessary. Remove the second split ring and inspect it for damage or wear. Replace if necessary. Lubricate split ring. Reinstall the split ring inside the lower actuator casing. Lubricate the other split ring. Reinstall it inside the lower actuator casing. Lubricate the O-ring. Reinstall the O-ring. Flip the lower actuator casing over. Remove the O-ring and inspect it for damage or wear. Lubricate the O-ring. Reinstall the O-ring. Flip the lower actuator casing over. Slide the outlet plate onto the sleeve and slide the sleeve into the lower actuator casing. Flip it over. Place the disc holder and disc retainer on the sleeve adapter. Insert the spring lock washers and hex socket cap screws and tighten. See the instruction manual for proper torque specifications. To perform maintenance on the intermediate flange O-ring, please follow the following procedure. Remove the cap screws. Lift off the intermediate flange. Remove the O-ring. Inspect the O-ring for damage or wear and replace if necessary. Lightly lubricate the O-ring before placing it in the body. Also apply grease to the intermediate flange. Place the intermediate flange on the body. Make sure to position the stud bolt holes on the outside of the body. Secure with cap screws. See the instruction manual for proper torque values. Carefully lift the lower actuator casing assembly and place it on the body. Make sure to match the alignment marks. Secure with stud bolts and nuts. See the instruction manual for proper torque values. Lightly lubricate the O-rings and then replace. Lubricate the edges of the inner plate. 
Lubricate the inner and outer diaphragm edges. Place the diaphragm and then the inner plate on the sleeve. Make sure O-rings are correctly positioned. Insert and tighten the hex socket cap screws. See the instruction manual for proper torque specifications. Note, when tightening fasteners arranged in a circular pattern, alternate the tightening of each fastener with the fastener directly across from it using a star crisscross pattern for five times until the proper specified torque is achieved. Each time around, when all screws are tightened to the required torque, the diaphragm will compress a little until the plates are in direct metal-to-metal -metal contact. It will take at least five times around before this happens. Only then will the applied torque on each screw remain at the required value. Lightly lubricate the spring. Place it on the inlet plate. Carefully place the upper actuator casing on the lower actuator casing. Make sure to match the alignment marks. Insert the two long bolts 180 degrees apart and away from the flanges. Place the washers, hex nuts, and brackets on the long bolts and tighten evenly. Using proper bolting techniques, install remaining short bolts, washers, and hex nuts. See the instruction manual for proper torque values. Place the travel indicator assembly in the upper actuator casing and tighten the travel indicator fitting. Maintenance for the EZHSO spring open regulator will be the same as for the EZH regulator, except that initially the protective cap and hex nut found in the center of the upper actuator casing will need to be removed. Remove the protective cap. Then remove the hex nuts. Then remove the washer. For reassembly, replace the washer and tighten the hex nuts in place. Then reinstall the protective cap. 